Well, good morning or good evening. For those of you that have joined us, we appreciate you joining us today for our presentation on Basis Bilingual Kindergarten non -shan. Today, we'll be hearing from, uh, primarily hearing from Tara McKenna, who is the founding head of school at uh, Basis Bilingual Kindergarten non -shan. Um, I'll also be presenting. My name is Tim Smith. I'm Vice President of Global Talent for Basis International Schools. And we'll also be joined by my colleague, Tony Cagle, who is the international recruiter who uh, works directly with this particular school. In terms of the things that we'll be covering, uh, we'll be covering the school. We'll touch on some insights about the network as a whole, and then also touch on some details about the expat package and some things to be aware of in considering a career opportunity with Basis International and bilingual schools. Well, it gets to be my absolute pleasure to introduce Tara. So uh, Tara has been uh, with us for a, a little bit. It's been my opportunity to be able to uh, participate in a couple of events with Tara. And one of the things that I've really appreciated is uh, the way that Tara is very engaging and really participates. Her enthusiasm and passion is one of her strengths. So Tara, we appreciate you joining us today. And... Uh, we look forward to hearing from you about your brand new school. So as the founding head of school, welcome. And uh, we really look forward to hearing your insights here today. Thank you for joining us. I'm super excited actually to, to join today. You're exactly right, Tim, in what you say. I'm really enthusiastic about the new campus we're opening here in Shenzhen, China. I would love to start off by telling you a bit about myself. Um, that will give the teachers an idea of the kind of our culture and maybe the environment we're building in Nanshan. So I've been in China now, actually, for this will be my 19th year. Um, I was based mainly previously in the north of China, and I'm a, also a newcomer to Shenzhen. And I must say this city is awesome. It's known as, I believe, the Silicon Valley of China. And um, it's a really modern, clean city with fantastic weather. And it's positioned in a great location for travel as well, if that's something you're interested in. It's something I definitely enjoy. And uh, as you can see from the slides, I'm a bit of an adventurer um, and I do love to keep myself active as well. So it's a really great city for those who are seeking different things to do and different places to explore. So this is Basis Bilingual Kindergarten. It's being renovated right now, and this was actually home previously to Basis Shenzhen International School. So that gives you the idea of the, the size and the capacity of the building, as it previously hosted over around 1,000 students plus, I believe. Um, there's It's over seven floors and it has extensive outside space. It's located in Nanshan district in an area called Shirko. And Shirko is quite a popular destination actually for expats. There are a few other international schools and international businesses in the area as well. So it really is a, an easy place to live if you're uh, new to China and if you're new to uh, the Far East as well. So. We really are excited about the location of the campus and about uh, opening this up next August 2024. Uh, this is a picture I love to share because this was taken last week in my weekly visits to the campus. It's being renovated at the moment and it should be finished actually by March 2024 at the latest. Uh, this is a picture with Sophia, who's our general manager. Um, she's based there every day, making sure that the progress of the renovations is going along smoothly. And I just wanted to point out, I was speaking about this before, you can see the, the woodwork on our the ceiling. Within the, within the renovations, there's a lot of um, authentic and natural materials going into the building and extremely uh, high quality, which I'll speak about a bit more. But the the details that are going into uh, the renovations are absolutely breathtaking and it's going to be an amazing, an amazing building. So should be completed by February. I think I'll be in there by March 2024. And excitingly, we already previously had uh, an open house 
last week. And we also start our formal testing and admissions in the next week or two. We've had extremely high demand um, for admissions to our Nanshan campus. So we're excited to see things progress quickly. So uh, the next couple of slides, I just want to take you through uh, the design of the kindergarten, I think, uh, for educators and teachers who, who are looking um, for their next location and their next school to work at. And the environment is really important. And I personally believe part of my philosophy and hopefully for those teachers interested that the environment is the third teacher. So there's been a lot of our intentional planning and specifics put into the various spaces throughout the kindergarten to ensure that we're looking at it from a child's perspective, but also it's a, a functional area um, where we can obviously, you know, have fun times and we can have learning times with those children. So the design also is considered everything from the child's eye. And I'll give you a funny example. Um, last week, we were looking at the, the whiteboards and the digital boards. Um, and I was trying to explain that the heights in terms of for the children. And I actually asked everybody, let's get down on our knees. Let's get down to child's eye level and height. And let's think about how a child um, experiences the classroom and will experience uh, the digital technology and the whiteboards in the classroom. So we really are taking every detail within the classroom and around uh, very seriously as well. So it really is a creative dynamic learning space, definitely functional, and we definitely uh, want it to be a place where the teachers enjoy coming to work every day. Uh, these are some of uh, the classrooms. So there'll be three uh, different designs with the classrooms. The We are going to host children from two years of age up to six years of age. And uh, the different grade levels will have the different themes within there. So uh, here we can see a bit of a, a sea theme. Also not on these slides, but there's um, a forest theme and then there's a space theme as well. And within these classrooms, they will have the bathrooms inside there, both the male and the female bathrooms. There'll also be preparation areas um, for the food because children will eat within their classrooms as well. And we're also in the process of designing cubby and locker space within there. On the walls as well, we'll have the latest technology with regards to our digital screens as well and interactive screens. And uh, we're also currently in the process of uh, selecting the furniture. Um, each grade will have our uh, different designs and different furniture. And of course, the height will be differentiated according to the children's age as well. So I'm really uh, excited to uh, start that next part of the project. Also within the kindergarten, as I mentioned, we've got a huge space. So besides the classrooms, we also have our three different areas for physical activity. Here we've got two images showing two of the gyms. Um, so there's the 400 square meter indoor multifunction sport hall and there's a 400 square meter comprehensive physical training hall. These spaces will be used by our dedicated PE teacher. So the children will have our, a specialist teacher, PE teacher, where they will enjoy that activity. And also these are multifunction rooms. So whenever there's not PE happening in there, teachers are free to use these as additional rooms for their activities as well. I also want to mention, since we're on our, we're speaking about physical activity, that for the teachers as well, we will have on the higher floors a gym specially designed for all our teaching teams. So after work um, or maybe during your lunch break, you're able to enjoy uh, your own private gym within the building. So that's a, a pretty exciting uh, asset to, to the building. I did mention uh, just now about the PE class. So your students, if you do decide to join us, would have their PE class. Beyond uh, the daily in class, they would have music class, drama class, art class, and there will be opportunities for the older grades also to have ELL 
classes as well. Um, because we have such vast space, we have so many additional rooms that you will be able to use beyond your classroom. And this is something really unique to this flagship kindergarten. Uh, you're not just in your room and limited on space. We have multiple floors uh, with dance rooms, with our various specialist rooms as well, choir rooms, and also we're in the process of installing our theater right now. So there'll be a dedicated theater on the campus for the children um, with modern and state-of-the-art sound system and lights. So one big thing at basis is we're really uh, advocate our high literacy and a love of reading. And this is something that is part of a child's daily schedule and is something that we also encourage parents to extend um, at home too. Part of the design, really important that we have a beautiful and large library that will host thousands of our Chinese and English books. And teachers will have access to this library to select books for your classroom. And you will also have opportunities to take the children to the library to for library class. We will have a dedicated librarian. So children are going to be able to check out their own books and be able to take their own books home to and exchange them every week as well. So we really want that kind of home school relationship with reading to, to form as well. So it is quite an extensive our size library, 350 square meters. And we are excited that this will be another additional room within the campus. Extending again on all these different spaces, I think um, I just want to reiterate again, this is a huge, really unique building. Um, there's no ECE, I believe, um, in this area that will host um, such space and our different functional rooms that you as a teacher would also have access to with your with your children. I know in for many schools it's really difficult for our kindergarten teachers to be able to leave their classrooms and uh, expand their children's learning experiences beyond the classroom. This is not the case at Nanshan. We have really many specialist areas um, where the children are able to explore. I mean, here we have a STEM classroom. The children will have a carpentry workshop, which beyond the school day, they will also extend into extracurricular activities that the children can do as well. We'll have our, our own kitchen. So we're encouraging teachers to uh, have cooking classes as well as often as you would like to do. And also we have the dedicated dancing room as well for the children. So that was the indoor area. Um, and if that doesn't uh, get you excited, let's talk about the, the outdoor area. The outdoor area is around 3,000 square meters, um, area dedicated to our kindergarten children. And there's various areas around the building and also on top. So as you can see from two of these images, you can see a garden. This is our rooftop garden. And this will be an area that the children will be able to plant and grow their own organic vegetables and flowers. And Shenzhen weather is actually perfect all year round and um, that it should be an active space for our students to weekly visit. Also, we have our different playground areas. These playgrounds, we put a lot of thought into this and we've cooperated with uh, a European, a Scandinavian uh, company who will uh, import uh, the playground equipment. So it's extremely high quality extremely high standard um, and there will be two different areas according to the age range of our students. Furthermore, we will have a football pitch or a soccer pitch, depending where you come from in the world. We will also have dedicated early years basketball courts and we also have, which I'm really excited about as well, 
is a water sensory area as well. And this area um, is multi-level and can be filled with water for the children to play in the hotter months. Um, and the water can then be drained, can be drained. And it's uh, it's really an interesting space um, because of the multi-levels where the children can play within there. Also, um, we have different sensory and exploratory areas as well around the kindergarten. So there's definitely a lot happening outside. So Shenzhen has our uh, great air quality and uh, has good weather. The only time I guess we would be inside is during some bad weather, typhoon season. Um, but there we have, as you've, as I've mentioned, there's plenty of indoor space as well. So this uh, is definitely something I'm uh, looking forward to uh, exploring uh, with our new teachers. So we did mention uh, previously that we've just held our first open house. It was a complete success and we actually outstripped demand. We have a waiting list now for our parents to come to our next open house. Um, we have in two weeks time, our first admissions testing uh, for our toddlers, our two-year-old, all the way up to our kindergartners as well. So we have a lot of parent interest and we're hoping that in August we open uh, with at least half capacity, if not more as well, of children in the local area. And just to mention as well, we already do have some staff we have recruited for Nanshan and they're currently at our um other schools here in Shenzhen so any new teachers joining our campus there would be um, a mentorship there with teachers who've previously and already in the basis network and already familiar with our systems that we would pair you with as well so you would have someone with on your level another teacher to be able to ask questions and mentor you so just to go through the two different kinds of schools within China there's two different licenses and that's the local license which what we refer to as a bilingual school and we have the international license and that is the international schools so as you can see the differences predominantly are that in an international school Chinese passport holders cannot attend these schools but within a bilingual school both local and international passport holders can attend these schools our ECE will be classed as a bilingual school and therefore we're able to have access to both local passport holders and international passport holders. In addition, for the curriculums is another difference. So within an international school, they follow a purely international curriculum. But in a bilingual school, we have both curriculums, which I think is really great because these children are going to predominantly be Chinese um, so it's important that they feel deeply rooted in their their culture and then have that international experience and that English language immersion at a very young age as well so there will be the international curriculum which will be led by you the international teachers and then you will have your Chinese counterparts which will also support with the Chinese national curriculum and Chinese lessons. So let me take you through the ECE program. This is a, a overview and infograph which kind of breaks down uh, the general framework of the curriculum. So the main elements as you can see are discover, explore and experiment. We are an inquiry play-based program so we do use the best practices, the best modern practices to ensure we have a very intentional program that's a hostilic play-based program. And I'm sure many of uh, the teachers listening today are familiar with uh, a play-based program. And we do use, it's broken down through themes. So it's what we refer to as our, a thematic program. And we have six themes that go throughout the year that work within our, our subjects within that, which is what we refer to as interdisciplinary learning. 
So as you can see, we have some examples on the slides of some of the themes that we have throughout the year that include my identity, which is focusing on who am I um, as a child. We have the building my relationships and community, um, which is around, depending on the grade level, we are looking at spiral curriculum. So it will depend on their community within their school and their family. And as they get older, that would fan out in terms of what that is. And it has to be meaningful to the child and their content. This uh, infograph actually, it, I've just noticed is in Chinese, but I can explain the different elements within that to you. So um, beyond the themes, we do have the subjects. So we have subjects such as the English, English literacy. We have math. We have world discovery. We have PE and all the other subjects we had discussed. Because we are a bilingual program, we do also have Chinese classes. And within that Chinese class, the children do have Chinese literacy and Chinese math, which is taught um, specifically by their Chinese teacher. If you are not familiar to BASIS, we do have a co-teaching model, and that's made up of a team of teachers within the classroom. And that's the SET, which is the subject expert teacher and that is the international teacher and then we have the let which is the learning enhancement teacher and that is the chinese teacher and this is where there's the classroom collaboration and co-teaching a care and you work as a team we also have a third additional member and that is the chinese assistant and uh, a Chinese monitor within the classroom. So anybody who works in early years in pre-K or kindergarten would be familiar um, to a collaborative and team approach to the operations in the classroom. And it really is an important aspect of what we do because we're drawing those different lines as well between what the English um, program and the Chinese program um, are teaching and hopefully they they come together in terms of alignment and also during our uh, the international teaching time the Chinese teacher which we refer to as the LET is also supporting and part of that co-teaching model. Beyond and outside the classroom you then also as I mentioned before your students would have art time a dedicated art class with an international teacher. They would have drama time with an international teacher, music teacher, PE teacher, and ELL. They're all international teachers too. So there is quite a large international teaching team that you would collaborate with. And we would also expect actually a crucial grade level that you would collaborate with our planning. So let me run you through some of the pre-K-1 and pre-K-2 curriculum elements. Um, I would like to add also, we're going to open up a toddler class, which will be the first in our basis China, and that's for two to three year olds as well. And for the pre-K-1 and pre-K-2, we do focus specifically on an enriching holistic play-based program. And um, it's thematic hands-on exploratory, program and those of you who are familiar with working with pre-k children it shouldn't be a surprise to know that it combines our uh, all the different elements of english literacy math world discovery and that's done within our gathering times with specific instruction time but also within learning centers um, and these are to ensure that the children have very hands-on sensory uh, elements to their daily life to ensure that children are learning um, in different aspects as well. We do place a lot of focus um, on the English literacy and element. We are an uh, accelerated program, so we do... Um, ensure a rigorous program and we do hold our students to high expectations because we are preparing them for the basis elementary curriculum our grade one which leads me on to the kindergarten so kindergarten uh, is an accelerated program as I just mentioned 
and it goes above and beyond a traditional uh, kindergarten and early years program. By the time our students get to grade one, there is a lot expected of them with regards to the academics. So we really are ensuring that we put a lot of time and focus on ensuring that children have the academic skills necessary to succeed when they leave our ECE and go on to our, a basis school. So we do have, again, English literacy, Chinese, math, world discovery, and then all the specialist classes. We do also ensure our children are learning and we begin the year with a map test for our students in kindergarten. That's to help the, the teachers get a baseline for where the students are at. And part of the kindergarten program, we do also have a reading program, a guided reading program. So anybody interested in a kindergarten position, we are looking for somebody that has really strong literacy skills and the capability to ensure the children are ready for our grade one program. Well, Tara, thank you so much for providing such great insight into uh, the school, the setup the structure, um, insight on the curriculum, the program that, uh, that we'll be running and that we have for ECE. I think it's really great. It's it's fun to see the, uh, the, the, the evolution of that building. So for those that don't know, this building was the first building uh, in which we opened up a, a basis international school. So the great heritage and, and background that we have in that building, I'm so pleased to see that we're uh, you know, repurposing it for uh, additional great learning and, uh, and education. So it's fun to see that. I particularly like that the uh, the bakery room. It looked like you had some uh, some cactus design in there. So as uh, you know, coming from Arizona, having the saguaro cacti in there were <laughs> phenomenal. I love that. So uh, if if uh, there's not enough baking going on, we can just call it the cactus room. We call it the Arizona room. If uh, if you need a, a change of term, so really fun to see that. And then also um, uh, particularly. Um, uh, appreciate you kind of clarifying that distinguishing difference between an international school and a bilingual school. One of the things that we've seen, particularly in Shenzhen, is that there's been such high interest and demand for um, families interested in, in participating in the, the basis program that um, being able to open up bilingual programs and, and being able to offer this uh, great education to local families um, is, is really so great. So appreciate you uh, clarifying that. It was, uh, that was really helpful. Nanshan is probably my favorite area in uh, in Shenzhen as well. So you have a great location there. So. We do, we do. Yeah, I'm excited. Very expat friendly, um, great areas, location, and and you know restaurants and everything right around that area for uh, for expats to uh, to to participate in. Uh, a great place to live. So thank you, thank you for sharing those insights. Yeah, thank you. Well, it gets to be uh, my pleasure to share some additional details, um, somewhat briefly, um, regarding participating in, uh, in, in the BASIS network. So BASIS Bilingual Kindergarten, Nanshan, is part of the BASIS International and Bilingual Schools. And so it, we are part of a network. There are 13 international and bilingual schools, including the two new schools we're opening up this next year, including uh, our, our new kindergarten in uh, Nanshan. And then also we have six independent schools in the United States. So it, it forms a network of schools whose focus is in providing a high level of education to, uh, to students. One of the things that is also very unique and stands out as somewhat different is that in considering an opportunity with BASIS uh, in China, you'll be participating and receive such tremendous support from the time that the, your offer goes out uh, the HR team will be answering questions. They provide all of the details relative to um, what you will need uh, for your visa. There's tremendous visa assistance. You'll have support all along the way. They take care of everything in terms of logistics and getting your flights arranged uh, for you as well as accompanying family members. They'll be taken care of for you and get things set up. The housing is all set up for you. Um, it's fully furnished housing. You can see here an example of uh, the welcome package that is also provided. You're really well taken care of when you join BASIS International Bilingual Schools in China. And the support that's provided from the HR team and HR staff will, will make the transition 
very easy and simple for you and uh, being able to come to China and um, or if you're within China already, being able to make that transition and joining us in, in, uh, in Shenzhen. Something else that um, they really provide great support on is getting things set up to make living simple and easy. So they get things set up for your banking. Um, they take care of uh, you know, the mobile apps that you will need. Everything is run electronically from you know, payments to, uh, to location, to buying tickets. Everything is done through your phone. It's extremely simple, uh, convenient, easy living. And they help you get everything set up so you can navigate everything through your phone. They get you a Chinese SIM card uh, so that when you arrive, you have access to everything that you need uh, there in China. And the support at every step of the way is really just top notch and second to none. So you're really well taken care of when you join us in, uh, in China. All right, so speaking of um, experience moving to China and joining BASIS, I'm going to turn things over to my colleague, Tony Cagle. Again, Tony is the international recruiter that works uh, directly with Tara and the school in Nanshan. So uh, uh, Tony, we'll turn it to you for some additional insights in working with BASIS and working in China. As Tim talked about, we really have some great things set up for you. If you are lucky enough to speak with one of our current teachers or a former teacher, they are gonna share with you a lot of the great things that BASIS has to share, um, especially when coming over. One of the things we do hear from candidates is how, how excited they are um, and how easy our visa team and HR team makes the process. So why teach for BASIS International Schools? We are very big on collaboration. A wonderful thing about BASIS is not only are you able to collaborate with the teachers who are in your grade level, but you may be collaborating with other subject areas or other grades or across other campuses because we are such a large network really allows for you some opportunities to interact and learn from other teachers. I know when I was in the classroom, some of the most important learning points that I received were from other teachers and being able to work alongside amazing teachers, which we have a basis. The academic culture, not only do we have high academic standards for our students, but our teachers as well. So it goes back to that collaboration piece. You're going to be able to be working with teachers who are excited about what they are doing, who have high standards for themselves. Basis network, we are a large network as Tim talked about. So there's a lot of opportunity to not only work with other great teachers, but as you stay and grow with basis to explore other areas of the of China and really explore you know new things and grow in your career as well as we open new schools there's certainly lots of opportunities and of course our basis students uh, one of the biggest things that you'll hear from our current teachers is how much they love the basis students not only are they excited to be at school but they have a real you know dedication to be there they work hard uh, they are you know second to none. So, why teach in China? Well, we have convenient modern living, especially in Shenzhen. You can order almost anything that you need and have it delivered quickly to your apartment door. So everything is really easy to access, especially technology. If you are a technology buff, it's really easy to get the latest and greatest technology in Shenzhen. Education is highly valued. So families attending our schools see education in just such a different way. They are excited for their students to be there. They are, really value their teachers that uh, work with our students. So that is something that's a little more unique. You get to experience a new culture. China is known for its amazing food, its amazing history. There's lots to see and do. Um, and just experience the warm people that are there. Everybody that I've spoken to that has moved to China has talked about the warm and gracious people that live there and how eager they are to help. Cost of living. If you are looking to save money, China is a great option for you. Not only can you live a, a fairly lavish lifestyle and go out to dinner and do some travel, but there's some opportunity to even save some money depending on um, your lifestyle. So cost of living is certainly much lower than you would see in other places. Let's talk about our expat package. Some of the things that our package includes, one is travel benefits. If you get hired on with BASIS, we will pay for flights uh, and provide visa support for you and your family coming over at the beginning and end of your contract. We also provide an annual return home allowance that you can travel home each year 
and visit with your family that's back home. We provide health and tuition. So we do provide as a global health coverage, uh, which is great because it will cover you when you are in China or when you are traveling. Um, it even includes some aspects of the uh, US if you're a US citizen. If you are bringing children with you, you can enroll up to two children free of tuition at a basis school so they can get that high quality education that we provide. And one really great thing about basis is we provide meals to you and your children if they'll be attending for breakfast and lunch. And these are not your typical cafeteria meals, but they really bring in some high quality chefs to serve some amazing food. So that adds to not only do you not have to pack your lunch, but that's an extra money saving tip as well. As far as housing goes, we do provide fully paid furnished housing for our teachers. There is a housing allowance that you can take as well after you've been in China for some time, if you decide that you have a different area that you want to live in, or you're already in China and have established a, a different neighborhood that you prefer to live in. And there are extra bonuses as well. So we have a 10% retirement benefit that you receive at the end of each year. There's a completion bonus as well as various different additional bonuses that you can receive throughout the year. Some of the things that we look for in a basis teacher. The first thing is mastery in your material that you're going to be teaching, which usually means that we hire teachers who have a degree in their subject area. So if you're a biology teacher, we are looking for teachers who have bachelors and many times masters or PhDs in biology. Um, and elementary, that means we're looking for elementary degrees. So in early years, specifically, that means we're looking for teachers who have gone to school and gotten their degrees in early years. So a bachelor's degree in early years education. It said many of our teachers have masters and go on to get their PhDs. All, this also means that we are looking for somebody who has experience in their area. So it is a re visa requirement that you have a minimum of two years full-time teaching experience but you will find across our campuses as teachers that we are hiring have some, many times a decade or more of experience in that area. A passion for teaching. You will see all of our teachers are just excited about education. They're passionate about what they do and you will see that across all of our campuses. Our teachers have a willingness to collaborate and develop elevate each other. Like I said before, we do a lot of collaboration across basis. And some of this comes naturally because our teachers are just so passionate about what they do. We are looking for teachers who hold high academic standards, not only for their students, but for themselves as well. And teachers who are willing to work hard. We know teachers all over the world are already working hard and at basis it's going to be no different. So do be prepared to, to put in the extra effort. We are looking for teachers who have that ability to engage young minds, um, so be aware of that. And just great teachers who are excited about BASIS and excited about the students that they can work with. Some things to expect if you come to work for a BASIS International School. Our new ECE building will be working with students who may be learning English for the first time, so it's going to be exciting and new for them. Flexibility is important. Whenever you open a new school, there are always going to be things that we are changing and adjusting. So we are looking for teachers who can be very flexible and ready to roll with things as needed. And anybody who is going to be bringing us their own children, um, you can be ready for your students to hit, go to an nearby international school. Couple of things to note about that is one is, again, our curriculum is very rigorous as, as Tara spoke about earlier. So if you are bringing your own child, you do wanna make sure that they are going to be prepared for the rigor of our curriculum. Many of our uh, students that come are, you know, in those younger grade levels, because by the time the students are hitting sixth, seventh, eighth grade, they're really taking more of the high school content. So it is important that you are prepared for your child to be able to be successful in that rigor is we want all basis students to be successful when they join us. And again, you can bring up to two children with you for free of tuition. If you are interested in learning more, there are lots of ways to learn about basis. We have a wonderful career site. We'll show you all the current job postings. Our team works really hard to put out a great blog in which you can 
read about our schools. Tara has a wonderful Haas letter that you can read and learn more about her and her vision for the school, as well as there's a lot of information from our teachers so you can see what it's like to be a teacher at BASIS. Finally, you can join our talent community and see what new things are coming for BASIS. All right, well, thanks, Tony. Appreciate those additional insights. So we do have kind of a Q&A portion now to answer any questions that you do have. So, but just starting off, I know, you know, two, two questions that we get uh, typically, and we'll invite Tara to come back on and maybe answer some of these questions, but um, two questions we get frequently include, you know, what is the typical class size? And then speaking to, um, you know, the, those individuals that are bringing students with them, if they're not the age of the ECE grades, what do those students do? So um, if you're able to share some insights on those two particular questions, it'd be great. So for the first question, with regards to class sizes, so that would actually depend on the age and grade of the students. So for our new toddler class, uh, we're looking around 15 to 18 students per class with a ratio of approximately three to four teachers within the classroom. And then for our pre-K and kindergartners, we're looking approximately around 20 children, maybe a bit more, depending on our admissions and how that's going. So, and that's with approximately three teachers in the classroom. So one great thing about BASIS is you definitely have plenty of support in the classroom. And of course you will always uh, have your Chinese LET with you and also a teaching assistant will be in there at all times as well. So you have uh, plenty of support throughout the day. And then for the second question uh, regarding uh, if you're coming to China or you're joining BASIS and you have older children. So if you have children bet between, of course, two and uh, two years old in kindergarten, they are able to attend our ECE. Beyond that, you have uh, the opportunity to attend our Shenzhen uh, International School, which is approximately... I would say a 15, 20 minute walk away, leisurely walk, 20 minute walk. Um, and actually our accommodations are centered perfectly uh, cl close to both locations as well. So it is with, within the area, we're lucky to have uh, the international school and that goes uh, from ECE all the way up to grade 12. So uh, we are positioned uh, within a great district and then you do have the international school up the road and then the wonderful accommodation um is uh close to both the kindergarten and the school and actually i just want to add that next year the the shenzhen international school apartments will open and our teachers will um have access to our accommodation within that uh building block and it's going to be really uh, a beautiful amazing modern apartment block situated in a fantastic location within the district and right across the street from walmart for those that uh were wondering if they yeah. had access to, uh, to to walmart shopping <laughs> yeah yeah and starbucks and a lot of other amenities yeah 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 and shake shack and other you know burger joints or pizzas are all just a click away on your phone <laughs> yeah. Very good. There's a question that uh, was asked. It says, is Chinese social insurance also provided? Uh, at BASIS, we actually provide annual pension program. So those, the, those concerned about our money for a pension program, um, we do provide that. And that's an annual, uh, an annual bonus that the, that the teachers get every year. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to that, that in terms of, um, you know, like social health insurance, so social health coverage, uh, the school does pay the uh, the social taxes for uh, for all the, uh, the employees. So people would have access to that, but you also have access to um, kind of the, uh, uh, um, uh, they call them, you know, the VIP hospitals and clinics to where they do have, you know, English speaking uh, physicians and care providers uh, as well. So just wanted to add that on there ah, okay 
the social insurance in China is there's two different things. So for, for health insurance, our health insurance is amazing. So we get a great, a great package. Um, also part of that health insurance, you also get an annual physical check. I just want to add that's really popular with teachers as well. So I actually had mine two weeks ago and it's a really comprehensive uh, physical check you get with that. And you also get dental, some money towards dental as well. And that is for you and your dependents when um, you're part of BASIS as well. So we do have a, a highly competitive and desirable insurance program. We did have another question come in. Um, what is the start and end times for the students day? Good question. Uh, so the students arrive at the ECE at 7.20. So they will either arrive by school bus or the parents will drop them off. And then the day ends, actually depending on the grade, anything between 3 and 3.30. So we have a staggered dismiss dismissal from the younger children to the older children as well. So I teach, I guess the question is more maybe what a teacher's typical working hours are, I'm guessing. So I would say that 7.20 is your official start time um, when the students are there. And then it's around 4.15. That is the official time. But within the week, we do have our other days. For example, on Thursdays, we have collaboration time where we have departmental meetings or we have network meetings. And those network meetings are um, across our network of schools in China. And that's part of our collaboration time. So there will be times throughout the week where you're expected to kind of stay for those meetings. But that's all part uh, and built in of the official working times. Perfect. And being an ECE program, are students required to be potty trained? For the twos, which is our toddler class, it's not required, but it is desirable that they are. And of course, potty training should happen at home and then supported in the kindergarten. By three years old, except for some certain cases, um, which we would speak at the point with the admissions with the families, we do expect children to be potty trained. I would also like to add my own question, thinking of it, that's about extracurricular activities as well at the end of the day, because we do get a lot of teachers ask questions about that. And so we do have a extracurricular after school activity program and um, within the ECA that will happen within the ECE that will happen next year. And that will be external companies that will also be providing services. But teachers also have the opportunity to also be part of that program and have their own classes and their own extracurricular activities as well, if they choose to do so. Well, Tara, Tony, thank you so much for sharing great insights. It looks like that is uh, the end of the questions that we do have. So I really want to thank you for providing the, the, the great insights uh, to the school. I'm excited about this first standalone ECE kindergarten and um, what you'll be able to create there. So really looking forward to things. Thank you so much. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to share all the exciting things that are happening and a bit about our ECE. I really am looking forward to... Uh, to uh, the next couple of months in terms of the development and sharing more progress and news on the building. That's great. Well, we look forward to seeing it. So again, uh, for those that want to see some of those updates, you can again, follow us on our social sites. Uh, we will post updates to Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. And um, as Tony had mentioned, you can join our talent community. You'll receive notifications of some of these updates as well as uh, new positions and opportunities opening up across the network. But uh, thank you for joining us tonight and uh, we appreciate you joining and we look forward to uh, seeing you apply with us.